Hello and welcome to the My Heritage webinar series. I'm Jeff Rasmussen, your host, and I'm live here in uh, at webinar headquarters in Middleton, Idaho, where it's really cold here. Today we have James Tanner, who is with us live in Provo, Utah. I'm guessing it's cold there too. Uh, for his class, Jumpstart Your My Heritage Family Tree with Instant Discoveries. Sounds like a fun topic here today. So uh, thanks to James and thanks to the more than 1,700 of you for registering for the live webinar. Uh, glad to have you with us wherever and whenever you are. Okay, so we're pleased to announce this. There we go. Uh, the publication of three important Welsh historical record collections on My Heritage: the, the Wales Parish births and baptisms, marriages and bans, and deaths and burials. So the collections consist of uh, nearly 15 million indexed historical records and cover over 450 years of Welsh history. And the high-quality scans of the original documents will be added very soon. Um, so uh, visit myheritage.com slash research for more information if you have ancestors from Wales. I'd like to introduce today's speaker, James Tanner. James has a B.A. in Spanish and an M.A. in Linguistics and a J.D. in Law. For 39 years, he was an Arizona trial attorney. He is an avid blogger and presently serves at the BYU Family History Library. He is on the board of directors of the Family History Guide Association. He has seven children and 34 grandchildren. Please put together your virtual hands and let's give James Tanner a nice warm webinar welcome. Hi, James, and welcome to the webinar. Hi, how are you today, Jeff? Oh, doing good. It's a great day to be indoors and a great day to be learning uh, some about my heritage and genealogy here today. So let's turn it over to you. Do you have that show show screen button on your screen yet? There we go. Okay. And then give your PowerPoint uh, one click, and that'll that'll hide the taskbar down there at the bottom. Okay. It's all yours, James. Looks beautiful, and uh, yeah, the time's all yours. Okay. Well, um, today we're going to talk about probably one of the most amazing genealogical experiences that some people can have in their lives, and and uh, it's uh, kind of a really, in, really uh, interesting for me, as uh, out helping people, it's really one of the more rewarding experiences. Um, the experience, I'm going to just kind of give you a little bit of overview before we get into it. Uh, the, uh, the experience happens almost immediately, especially if you uh, sign in or log in to MyHeritage with an account uh, for the first time. And during that process, what you will do is you will probably uh, answer a few questions about your family, about your parents and your grandparents, very, very minimal amount of information. And what happens around the world in a lot of cases, not every time, sometimes not, some people are, uh, are sort of in, in genealogical outliers, but there are many times here, and especially in the United States where we are, uh, and within a, a few minutes, at the most one or two minutes of time as the little bicycle guy bicycles on the screen, then what happens is that about, in, my, in our case around here, uh, usually from around 50 to 57 new names, including a lot of living relatives will show up. And I've had people actually break down and cry, especially those who have little or no contact with their family because they didn't realize they had so many relatives out there. It's just a wonderful experience. So this is basically an experience that happens when you start a new MyHeritage subscription. But as you have an subscription and as you create and build a family tree on MyHeritage.com, you will find the same kind of experience because you'll find that we have what are called instant discoveries. And instant discoveries are uh, can be very very surprising, and I, uh, as uh, probably can probably tell, I've been doing genealogy for quite a long long time. I'm fairly old, and uh, uh, even now I am surprised by the things that I, I find 
on the instant discoveries. This is particularly true with photographs and other things uh, like that, but a new people sometimes, uh, and information about people that I really never did any work with. So there's uh, some, some great things that come to those who register and have a family tree and uh, get busy with it. So what you do is, and I'll kind of go back over so you can see how it works, new users to MyHeritage can add their parents and grandparents, and then they get an instant discovery of people to start their family tree. Now, if you don't get a, a bunch of people to start, that doesn't mean that MyHeritage isn't going to help you an awful lot with your um, family history. It just may mean that the people you have put in so far uh, have not, for some reason, gotten into any of the records or any of the family trees on uh, fam on my heritage, and so you are um, you just need to wait a little while. You'll start getting these instant discoveries as you go along and get back further in your um, your pedigree. So, what are these instant discoveries? First of all, they're uh, fall into two different categories. We'll go through all of this and talking about them. And primarily what they are are individuals who uh, either appear already in your family tree with, and they have found additional information, or they are photographs of people that you don't have in your particular collection on, on uh, MyHeritage. So it's, it's a, a kind of like a new window out. Each one of these is a little window out into some more discoveries. Here's the official description of it. An instant discovery is a package of family history information that you can apply to your family tree in just one click. An instant discovery can either be a person discovery or a photo discovery. And um, you, as I'm going to say probably more than once, uh, this isn't obligatory. You don't have to add these people. You can ch pick and choose. If there's something there that you you don't recognize and don't really want in your family tree, then on uh, if you look really carefully at this uh, image here, you'll see there's a very faint X over on the right-hand corner. And uh, by clicking on that, you can dismiss this whole, this whole set of, of documents. Or you don't have to add all nine. You can go through and pick and choose and click off uh, the check boxes for those that you do not want to have. And I'll, I may say that a couple of times because it's important to understand that you're not obligated in any way uh, to either add the, the uh, whole package or, or even anything from the package. So uh, uh, I think there are people who get a little bit frustrated because they may start getting so many instant discoveries that they just say, whoa, 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 I don't need this. Well. The answer is that they're there always for your use, uh, but they're not necessarily, uh, they're not obligatory at any time. You can, you can pick and choose what you want to do with them. And what is important to understand is that these instant discoveries leverage the entire database of my family, her, uh, excuse me, of the family trees on my heritage. So for instance, in my, my position, I have thousands of names up on my family tree and my heritage. I have an unimaginable un, un, large numbers of not only instant discoveries, but record matches and smart matches and all the other benefits of having a family tree on my heritage. And it, it's, it's amazing how much information I've been able to gain from, from uh, having that that uh, kind of window into MyHeritage's ever-increasing database. There are a lot of resources. When we say there are a lot of resources, we mean a lot of resources. Now, the instant discoveries are based to some extent on what are called smart matches, and I'll come back and explain that in, in a little bit later in the presentation. But the, you know, the feed for that is, is people's family trees. And the, the important thing is that they have, they have sources, they have references and things that would help to help them to be more accurate. And we have presently on MyHeritage, according to uh, yesterday's figures off of the website, 60 million users out there. And that many people uh, spread out all over the world are uh, 
a great advantage in providing these this information as well as their 52 on their 52 million family trees and on those family trees there are well over 4 billion profiles meaning the number of people that are identified in those family trees so there's there's just a lot of information out there now i just checked yesterday and uh, this is the actual number of historical records interesting because i've been working on this for some time um in this particular presentation it's a little bit out of uh, out of the ordinary for me because i would be working on them in chronological order but this one i worked on earlier in the year and uh, got i was quite ill and could not present so we moved it off a little bit to the later in the year and this uh, over this period of time i've watched this number of historical records on uh, my heritage go up since the last time I revised this, it went up over a hundred million historical records. So there's just uh, an amazing amount of, of, of resources and additional resources that come along. And that's the advantage of these instant discoveries is that they continue to add information as it is accumulated and, and uh, uh, uploaded into the MyHeritage databases. When you, you upload, excuse me, when you access your uh, instant discoveries, you select instant discoveries under the discoveries menu or the discoveries tab in the main menu. That's this little tab right here. And you can um, basically uh, just click on that and it will bring up this screen that I have behind here that says instant discoveries. Uh, so now when you when it comes up you get little strips here of their anywhere from four or five to nine ten uh, or more uh, different discoveries in one batch and you click on the little tag that says view discovery to see what it is um, what it's all about what are these people and what kind of information in this case what i'm showing here on the screen are photographs. They're photo the photographic um, representations of um, the you know, of people that have been accumulated over the years. The question, of course, is: uh, Am I really related to these people? And uh, who are they? Um, it's often that we have photographs and we don't know who they are. And this this is uh, generally speaking people who have been identified. And sometimes that's that's one of the real benefits of having these instant discoveries because many other people are out there who can identify some of these people that we can't uh, predict, we don't recognize. Uh, so here's uh, what happens when you review and add a photo. You'll see over on the right hand side for each of those entries there's that uh, check box and that can be unchecked, and that means that you just click on it, and it, then that means that that particular item will not be added to your family tree. Uh, sometimes the photographs pick up things that you're not interested in, like uh, maybe you're not interested in a, uh, a country flag or a picture of a ship or something like that that doesn't really apply to your, to your person as such. And so you may not want to add that, or you may already have that picture of the flag or the ship and decide that you don't want a different view or a different photograph of it. So there's reasons for clicking on that. The other one is that you need to make sure that you have that the identity there is correct and that you recognize who that pe person is. Over on the right-hand side, you can see that I have a picture here for someone named Ellen Linton, and it says born Sutton. And then I have on my tree, my great-great-grandmother, Ellen Sutton, and it says show relatives so I can show who she's related to. And uh, we can see how we're related with uh, the person who had this particular photograph. So this is, uh, this is kind of the evaluation of Paige. And you'll see in the upper right-hand corner, there's a, a big ba bar button that says add seven photos to your tree. If, if you agreed that all of these photos were helpfully, helpful and you would like to have them added to your family tree and to your photo collection, then you just simply have to click that button and then they will have these linked to the proper person 
the one that's identified here. Um, of course, you can always go back through your photos and back through your people and edit and edit the photos and things that are there. So they're not, it's not like a you know one time uh, opportunity to to have these photos added to your family tree. Now the next thing is you'll want to view the original photo. <clears throat> By simply clicking on the photo, you get an enlarged view, and uh, in this case, you're, it's a very nice photo, actually, and it looks like you even get the border. This is a commercial uh, photo uh, printed in, um, and I'm going to guess, close to the early 1900s. It could be into the late 1890s. <clears throat> these are, that's the way these uh, commercial card photos were, that's when they were very popular. Now, if my voice starts to go, I might have to lower my my um, uh, tone here just a slight bit, but uh, we'll see if I can keep going here today. You can check your own information, so you go back and look at the family tree and see whether or not this person is the one that you already have. The fact that I don't have a photo for her is really important. If I look over there on the picture, I, it says add a photo, and so really I haven't had a, I haven't had a photo of Ellen Sutton. So this is kind of exciting that I am adding a new photo that I have never really seen or had before. So that's where that is right there. So. Now I'm anxious to get this photo and add it in, and so then I can uh, uh, add that photo uh, by clicking that button uh, to add the photos on the other. And I've gone through the same process with each of the other people on my, in, on my Instant Discoveries photo discovery. And so all seven of those photos will be added to my family tree when I click that button. Just one second here. Get a little tiny bit of water. Um, so clicking that button will add all seven at once. You don't have to go look. You don't have to manage it. You don't have to do anything. They're automatically linked to your family tree. So then you can click on the My Photos under the Family Tree menu up there on the top of the screen. You'll see the main bar. Uh, bar menu bar there that says my heritage home family tree if you click on your family tree the second option there on the on the drop down menu is my photos and this will bring up your photo section um, <clears throat> this isn't uh, aimed at at, at uh, making intimidating or making anybody feel bad um, my family happens to have been active in genealogical research for well over a hundred years now. And uh, so I am like the, th in some cases, the third and fourth generation of people who have been actively involved in accumulating massive amounts of genealogical information on all of my lines. So it's it's just, uh, it's kind of intimidating, I think. but. In my case, I have over 10,000. At the when I showed this one, there were 10,339 media items, uh, which is just kind of overwhelming. But uh, they are very, very. <laughs> there is a lot of here that I just I just find to be very impressive. Um, for instance, pictures of my grandparents, who I never knew because they both died before I was born, and things like that. So there's things here that that I have never really had an opportunity to see. Um, now, once you have the photos, and, and I wanted to add this into the, uh, into the mix here today because I think it's, it's directly relevant because you're not just going to sit there and look at those, um, the, those photos. There's lots of things that will be helpful to you that you can add to or work with on your photos. So the two just absolutely outstanding features of my heritage are the enhancement feature and the colorize feature. So uh, these are two different buttons that show up when you look at the photo. And that up at the top, you can see the information that we have on this 
uh, where it came from and, and who it is. This happens to be my grandmother. And uh, uh, clicking on those two buttons above the right hand part of the photo there is enhance and colorize. If I click on that enhance photo, then I get this photo over here. Now, you, if you switch back sort of eye back and forth between the two, you can see what a phenomenal addition this is. I mean, it has it brings out detail that you uh, you can't see. There are even more dramatic uh, uh, opportunities here, but the next one, colorize, is 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 spectacular. And uh, when you click on the colorize, it will colorize that image and really bring it alive. And there's one thing about these colorized images is that you have a tendency to see a lot more detail in these photos than you would otherwise. Just to kind of look and compare that, let me go back here and so you can see we're starting with that photo and then we enhance it and then we colorize it. Okay, and so to, to see that process, what I wanted to do was to, um, let's see if this works. Uh, I did a little short video here, and we'll, uh, we'll click on it. We'll see the little uh, wand go around and around for a while. Um, depending on the amount of detail and the number of faces, it seems to take uh, depend on the number of, of individuals to some extent, but it's not a long process. It's really quite quick. Uh, of course, this will depend on a number of things. First of all, it might depend on your the speed of your connection to the internet, and it also might depend on the speed of your um, of your computer itself. Now, look at the difference in the quality of that image as you go across. Now it'll go to colorize that, and we'll do the same process for colorizing the. The, the video here. And this, uh, once again, takes a few minutes. And as I mentioned, it may depend, the time it takes may depend on the speed of your computer, uh, to some extent, your memory. Here we go. And we'll see this all colorized. And you can just see that there's a tremendous amount more sparkle, what you see in that those photos. Cre a great opportunity now that you've found a whole bunch of new photos from your ancestors, from your relatives around the world, uh, assuming uh, that you've done some work on your family tree. Um, interesting point, I bring that up because the the whole thing here is driven by your, your uh, it's, you're in partnership now when you get to this point with my heritage in a sense. The partnership is that MyHeritage will supply the information, but you have to do the work to get that information into your family tree so that you can get even more information. So the, the process is kind of a give and take. So you, uh, you'll get the instant discoveries, but unless you have put additional people in your family tree and done some work uh, be, based on the records and the documents that you've been able to find, uh, and or your uh, smart matches and your um, uh, record matches and the the things that have been added to your to your tree and the people that have been added, then you're driving the the instant discoveries. In other words, you've got more information as you add more information. So this is the it's sort of a, a trade off here is that you have to actually do it do the information, add the information into your family tree. So when people ask me, well, should I go through and click on this on all those record matches? Should I add those to all the people? My answer is certainly yes, because they are what helps to, to round out that person's life. And also it's important uh, because it drives more information. The more you do, the more you work with the program, the more people you're going to have. Now, we're switching over to the person discovery. That first one was the photo, the were photographs, and now we're looking at just people. And the people discovery says that there may be additional information um, or new people that you are not in your family tree, but may be in someone else's family tree. 
Now, this first example here is a family that I'm descended from in um, from England. I will go back into uh, uh, the Netherlands, and it is a Jewish family, as you can probably tell by some of the names that you're seeing up there. Um, but this family uh, is one that I have done um, personally only done a small amount of work on. They're they're all back in the. Uh, this this start this family starts with my great great grandfather and he his family, and so it's uh, a line that goes back a ways, and I've been looking at it recently and it's and it's amazing to me how much work has been done on this family by other people, by others uh, who, quite frankly, I was never never knew I was even related to that many people here, but. Uh, their middle name is DeVries, or DeVries with an F, and uh, both ways. And uh, when my ancestor came to America, his name was Charles Godfrey DeVries, and he got married uh, in, uh, uh, her, in, actually in Utah, and then moved to Arizona at, very early on in the 1800s. And he... Uh, when I say early on, that may not be so early for some places in the world, but uh, there were and there were virtually no uh, um, nobody from the United States in uh, in Arizona until uh, mostly after the 1860s. So it's been really rather recent. Of course, there were Spanish-speaking people. Uh, primarily, it was owned by Mexico until part of the the wars that occurred during the, the 1800s. But uh, when uh, Charles Godfrey de Vries came to, uh, to live here, in, uh, live in Arizona, he uh, changed, when got married, he changed his name to his wife's surname. And uh, so he was known as uh, Charles Jarvis, um, which is another English name. So we ended up with uh, being in the Jarvis family, but only through his wife and not through him. And we have the DeFries family. Um, now we can view the discovery like we did before. And the first thing they're going to ask you here is, are these two people actually related? This is what's in your tree. And this is what's in the new tree. And the new information that was uh, from other family trees primarily. And as we look down through that information, we see that their that birth, death are the same. Um, I don't have the parents in my tree, and uh, this would add parents. So we are in a situation where I'm actually going to have additional information added to my family tree in the way of new people. Um, and all I had to do was uh, say, yes, this is a match. And now I've got uh, 12 new people in my family tree, uh, which gives me some work to do because then I have to go in and verify that I really am re uh, related to these people uh, once I get into the to the nitty gritty of it. So then I can click right here, and but I still have to ask the question: question Are these the same people? And and if I do this carefully, then it won't, uh, in a sense, mess up my family tree. But on the other hand, I'm going to add 12 people. Now, if I look at the names here and I look at the family, it's basically a family, one family and some of the um, other family members that are in the family. And in this case, it's adding a lot of people that I really don't recognize their names. So I may spend a little time looking through this and looking up these people in my family tree before I decide to click the uh, the button to make sure that I'm I'm getting what I really think I should get. Now, my heritage is extremely accurate in these instant discoveries. Um, I seldom find any problems, but on the other hand, it's always a good idea to know what you're adding to your family tree and uh, be careful and look at all the people in there their things. So now when I click that, I can add 12 new people to my family tree. 
Now, what are the limitations here? Oh, obviously, we're going to run into some kinds of limitations here. First of all, it's only uh, available for family trees having 25,000 or fewer individuals. I don't see that as being much of a limitation. Uh, perhaps it's a goal. Maybe you'd like to get 25,000 people in your family tree. But uh, in any event, that's kind of a, a cutoff point. Uh, I guess they figure if anyone has 25,000 or more people in their family tree, they probably don't need instant discoveries. So after applied, the new discoveries will have to be recalculated. Now, what this means is that you don't get instant discoveries instantly. They have to go back through your family tree and see if there are any more areas that they can find new discoveries. Obviously, you've added more people in this case, and so they will have to look to see now if there's something else to add. And that will not happen instantly. In fact, it may take a few days or longer for some more new discover, new uh, instant discoveries to show up. This is actually repeating the same thing. Additional new discoveries may take some time. Now, each instant discovery is based on matches by MyHeritage's smart matching technology. And um, it's important to understand where and how this is getting into the instant discovery area. Smart matching is a specialized, powerful genealogy, genealogy technology that matches people that you have defined in your family tree with people in another family tree that members all over the world have created on MyHeritage. Okay, this is repeating a little bit differently what I said earlier, but to be, uh, to put this in a little, uh, sub, kind of say this in a different way that'll be helpful, uh, perhaps if it still doesn't click, is that uh, as people, as, as people all over the world create their family trees, uh, the way this works in the world is that there's, uh, you're, you're basically going to find out that you're related to lots of people out there. Um, as, you're, as you as an individual uh, have two biological parents, you have maybe have more uh, parents, uh, step parents or, or um, uh, adopted parents or whatever else out there. But it, strictly biologically speaking, it, the number of your parents or grandparents that doubles in each generation going back. Uh, we say that a lot in genealogy. And the reason we say it a lot in genealogy, the reason I say it a lot is because some people just don't seem to understand how that happens. And, and they aren't, they just don't grasp the, the idea that uh, you know, going back six or eight or 10 generations is going to generate thousands of people, more than you can imagine people. So it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's just, and you're related to all those people going back, boink, all those thousands of relatives, your great, 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 great going back grandparents. Now, all their descendants <clears throat> of all those people, um, not all of them just had one child that was your great grandfather or whatever. So there's a whole long list of people out there with lots of children. Some of them had uh, whole bunches of children. I just ran across one, <clears throat> one of my, well, some of my relatives had uh, phenomenal numbers of children. I had uh, my great great grandfather had, had 23 children, for example, uh, with uh, five different wives. Okay. But the point is that all these people out here that are working on do, putting in their genealogy with the help from my heritage. Uh, if they match up to you and your relatives, that's not surprising. It's, it's not even surprising all over the world because MyHeritage has uh, people on MyHeritage family tree in, in every country of the world. There's just all over. And many of the countries, particularly in Europe and uh, European countries, have uh, up to millions and millions of people on family on the family search on excuse me on the my heritage family trees um you have to excuse me if i sometimes say family search because that's what i work with all day long at the byu family history library so where uh, um, i get my names uh, confused occasionally you may still have to check and verify each of the suggested discoveries. And I have to emphasize this, that there's, there's no 
they're suggestions. They're not absolutes. So you just need to really uh, be aware of what you're doing and what you're adding to your family tree. Um, uh, the interesting part would be, what if everybody out there has the wrong names? Well, yeah, that could happen, it's particularly if they all happen to have copied from the same wrong source. So you you really have to spend some time evaluating and looking at all of those kinds of of entries out there, and I'll emphasize again that you can reject any of each individually or the whole batch of any of the instant discoveries. You don't uh, have to take them. Now, as they add records, as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, the the tremendously large number of records, and as Jeff mentioned in the introduction of this, uh, millions of of record new records from Wales. Um, and I have ancestors that came from Wales, so that to, for me is very interesting. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, for the, one of the things that have great benefits to me personally is that the record sets on my heritage uh, pretty well match um, my ancestral lines. So it's it's been uh, it's been interesting as to the number of, of discoveries that uh, that they make. So as they add these millions of records and compare them to your tree, then you're having it. You're you still have more chances of having new instant discoveries, and your chances increase every day. So your your bill your ability to find records grows as your tree grows. So do your instant discoveries. Okay, so let me just kind of sort that out just a, a little bit again. As I mentioned a few moments ago, if you do the work on your family tree and add in names, then my heritage has the ability to match those to other family trees. And if they find the match, then you get additional instant discoveries. That's how it works. Now, it doesn't take any time. This is not, a, there's no lag. When you put new names into to, um, my heritage, into your my heritage family tree, you're going to immediately start accruing record matches and smart matches. I have, uh, time and time again, I have uh, uh, added people, new people, to the family, not me, but with helping patrons at the library or helping uh, people online or whatever, I've had them add their names into their original names, their name, their parents' names, their grandparents' names into the My Heritage family tree. And within a matter of actually seconds after putting those names in, I have started to see smart matches on other family trees. And, uh, and generally, record matches lag a little bit. The, here's one question that comes up occasionally, and that is uh, people say, well, I've added in my family, and I'm not getting any record matches, and I'm not getting any smart matches. I haven't got anybody. That is possible, because you you might be uh, in the first one person in your family, in your immediate family, to uh, to use an online family tree and particularly to put any names in or put their names into my heritage that's that's entirely possible where the matches will start is if you start looking and searching for the people in your family tree and adding records and eventually it it's like kindling a fire you'll strike the match haha <laughs> and then you'll get the um, you'll get start getting smart matches and record matches probably only on one line or maybe on more lines as you as you do more work and add more. You always have the option of doing searching the records for your your person and adding in the information that you find in those records. But it's that process that primes the pump that gets this whole thing going and uh, gets the record marches, matches working. So now we're going to look at for just a moment here matches by people. You can match by people, and you can see on the screen there uh, where you have, you can look at all the matches. You can look at just record matches, meaning records where just the records that have been added from the um, digitized records that are on MyHeritage. 
and the smart matches, which are people who have trees where the individuals in their family tree could correspond or match the people in your family tree. They're your relatives in a sense. If they're descendants, obviously you're all descendants from those same people, so they're your cousins. So now you have, that's your all matches, record matches and smart matches. That's where you get the information. Now, reminder, the reminder, oh, I skipped over that too fast, I'll go back. Here's the reminder. The reminder is that you need, you need to do the work. You need to evaluate, uh, you need to think about what's happening here, and you need to go back and be careful and carefully look at all of the information that you've, that you've acquired, and then make decisions based on, on the records themselves. So this is, this is a very important thing, that you follow this process consistently. Because if you put in a wrong name in your family tree and then start building on that name, you can waste a lot of time on a line that's not related to you. Now, record matches is kind of different than what we've been talking to. I've mentioned them sort of in passing. Record matches show uh, possible record sources that apply to your ancestor. You can see here I have like 7,000 of these, and I could spend probably the rest of you know the next few years putting all these in. But the, the problem I have is that as no matter how many I end it, add in, that number never goes down because the new records are added to my heritage, uh, new information is accruing all the time. And uh, it's, I'm just, I lose the race. I, I can add in a whole bunch of sources and there's still more to add. Smart matches point you to your relatives. So here's information to um, how many, what that review nine matches means is that there are nine different people on, on my heritage for that particular ancestor. There's there's lots of other really, really useful tools on MyHeritage. These aren't the only things that, um, that we have uh, available, and I'm going to, to just spend a few minutes uh, talking about these tools. Uh, this is the MyHeritage uh, family tree uh, drop-down menu, and you're going to see some uh, quite a few um, other programs and options and, and features of the program here. Uh, you can obviously see there's the My Photos link, the import uh, GEDCOM link if that applies to you. Uh, you manage trees. Uh, you can have more than one family tree on MyHeritage and this lets you manage your trees. In other words, look and change from one tree to another or delete a tree if you don't want to work on that one anymore or whatever. Then there's one there that applies only to people who are family search partners with uh, MyHeritage, and that is a um, and that's reserved only to those people who are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, um, and uh, it is a, an opportunity where they can actually synchronize between family search and MyHeritage. It's kind of a complicated process. Um, and uh, but there's plenty of information out there, even for me, that talks about that. Um, there's also a pedigree map, which is extremely useful in identifying uh, the locations and making sure that your information is consistent. There's printing, and then there's the, my uh, one of my favorites, which is the consistency checker. Uh, I call this uh, kind of the uh, the one that's going to give you the most uh, uh, heartburn and out of anything on this website because as it goes through your family tree, it may tell you, it tells you any place of 38 different ways that it's inconsistent or not correct, and so that can really. Uh, uh, if you think you're being perfect, uh, you, you run the consistency checker on your family tree and find out uh, quite differently. Uh, relationship report is just that. You can run that on any one of the people in your family tree and see how you're related. Uh, you can see a list of your sources and you can back up your family tree if you wish to do so. 
The next one is uh, the DNA. And uh, in this, you can see when I started this back in Valentine's Day. So, um, but you have, they have a fabulous DNA section. Uh, you obviously need to take a test from uh, MyHeritage or on the alternative, you could upload your raw DNA data to, uh, to it, depending on the company that it comes from. But they do allow some of the companies to allow it to upload their raw data. And um, that might work. Uh, the raw data is raw data, so uploading that probably will work. But you'll do better if you get a, a, a DNA test from MyHeritage. And they have your ethnicity estimate as to all of the DNA tests on those family, on family tree programs. Uh, where What happens here, though, is that your DNA matches and some of the DNA tools are highly sophisticated. It's not something that we're going to I'm going to go into today uh, because that uh, kind of goes way, way beyond the scope of what we're talking about. But you should be aware that these are features in addition to the to the instant discoveries that are really fabulous. Uh, you can also get health reports. This is a, another a level of, uh, of DNA coverage. There's uh, obviously a charge for a DNA test, and uh, there's part of, and there's an additional subscription charge. But you can get health reports that tell you uh, from your DNA test what uh, what different types of, of uh, conditions you might be susceptible to. Um, I always like to put a little bit of kind of a, a warning in there because there's, uh, you know, uh, years and years ago, there well, they're still around, but the Reader's Digest used to have uh, a section, kind of the, the uh, disease or condition of the month on the Reader's Digest. And when I was younger, especially when I was very young, when I was in, uh, you know, in grade school and in high school, I used to read that Reader's Digest, and I think I, abs I got the, the symptoms of every disease they ever reported on. I was so convinced that I had whatever it was that they, had, uh, they were reporting that month. So you just have to be a little bit careful here with health reports. These are genetic risks. They aren't they aren't diagnostic. They're not going to tell you what you have. Okay, well, we're through a few minutes early, but uh, uh, we can make some questions if there's any questions out there. Oh, good. Thanks. Uh, thanks, James. What I thought, I was I was curious. I'm going to, I want to pull up my screen and just kind of do mine live and have you walk me through it. Uh, okay. So <clears throat> here we go. Do I need and, to? unshare or anything oh no you uh, no can you see my screen now yeah okay so here i went up to myheritage.com and i hovered over discoveries and i went down and i clicked on instant discoveries so mm -hmm. i'm i'm in the right place is that right <laughs> okay that's it okay and oh i got a cough just a second thank goodness for this mute button all right uh, so I see there's three different sections here, all discoveries, person, or photo, and I'm guessing that what I'm seeing you've right here all. is the combination of of all of those, okay? So yes, if, you've got, yeah, you've got all discoveries. If you click on photos, you'll see it change, the number will change. Okay. So there's that's the photo discovery. And then on person discoveries, that'll give you, that doesn't mean you don't have photos with the people, but basically... They're looking at information, not just on the as the, at the photo. Okay. All right. Um, so it looks like I have a person discovery for Harry Martin. It says it can add 12 new people to my tree. And mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> what happens if I click this X? Is that like, is that, that the it, same it as re away. It, is that rejecting away. the discovery so I don't see it again? Yep. Okay. It's gone. All right. I don't want to. Can I undo a rejection? That's a question that some people have asked if they accidentally um, reject it. The, ans the answer is they probably will come back again. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I, I don't know of a way of undoing it, but uh, okay. uh, they do have, you can, uh, you know, you if, if as you add information and as you go, I mean, you may decide that you don't think that if people are related, then all of a sudden you realize, oh, yeah, I am related. 
but then as you go on and get uh, smart matches and more, then it's likely that this information will show up. Okay. If, if it's not in your tree, it'll keep coming back. All right. So I'm going to actually, let's just click on it here. Uh, I'm going to click on view. This is not something, James, that I've ever actually done. Uh, so oh, let's do this. Okay. I'll click on view discovery. I like to learn by doing. And, uh, and so here we are. So this is the yep. Harry Martin in my online tree. And, and I can tell you right now <clears> that they're the right, the same person. And looking at over here, this is the Harry Martin that my heritage found in someone else's tree. Oh, and it tells me right down here, it's in a tree managed by this person. And, yeah, and if uh, you look at that, Jeff, you'll see that there's more information. Yeah, yeah. So comparing the information side by side, I'm seeing, oh, look at this. On this side, they have a death event that mm -hmm. I don't have on mine. So that's interesting to me. Okay. And. And they also have more information about the siblings. Rupert Leslie Dunn. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, look at this. Well, they've got some middle names that I didn't have. Leota's middle name. They don't have my Merlin's middle name. I have that. Let's see. Ethelin and Der Okay, interesting. So if I say right now, if I click on yes, is that right now, does that automatically add those people to my tree no all that tells okay. you is that you have 12 people okay so let's click yes now all right so here so now the, you can go look more information about those people if uh, you want look to. at this they have all the <laughs> i'm doing this live everyone this wasn't set up they have the pictures for all these people uh-huh yes some pictures well that's Okay, that's pretty neat. <laughs> All you right. See now at the bottom you have reject the discovery or add it to your tree. Okay. So and, someone asked, uh, can can they just select? I'm looking for check marks next to each person. It no, doesn't really look like here. it. Uh -uh. So it's either so here, I here I add here them it's all. Here pack, package deal. Okay. So here I would add them all. Uh, another question, uh, James. So. A couple of people asked this before they click on the "Add to Your Tree" button. Um, how how would they go about investigating these people more before you know adding to their own tree? Okay, so scroll back up a little bit. Okay. Now that from the going down goes yeah. However, whichever way show more of the picture to the guy on the left. <laughs> the oh, little, okay. Like, drawing picture like this okay keep going keep going nope okay but see that person that you have there is now is he's the person in your family tree actually you've got more information about him but uh he's the one in your family tree so right now you this isn't going to go away so if you click on your family tree and go to that person you can look and see if, who you've got in your tree what information what this would do and, and compare it to everything you have. So if you go to Family Tree and go to that person. Harry Wilmot Martin. And we'll go to search here in just a second. So I'll go right here. Yeah, right there. Harry Will. Uh oh. Harry. I'm thinking it's him. <laughs> and yeah, this looks like it. Yeah, this is him. Okay. So here Okay, I'm, now you now you can see what you have, which is not a whole lot. Yeah. And so it's going to be much to your advantage to have you can vo view his profile, you can see it totally what you have on that one person. Okay, yeah, see so now. in in mine I don't even yeah, I don't have the death. Right. You haven't added anything yet. Yeah. And so you go down here, you can see there's the some of the same people, so yeah. basically you're going to update information for all of these people. Yeah. So, so James, I'm going to here's Jeff's philosophy. Um, I would be more comfortable. I, I, no, I'll, I'll say it this way. I wouldn't. I personally would not be too uncomfortable accepting that instant discovery because of the time period. Because uh, I mean, they would be like my 
uh, my grandparents' ages, for example, um, and uh, and and the person that contributed that information to their tree, yeah, they probably actually have accurate information. Now, when it's when we go back further than this, I, I'm a little hesitant to accept that discovery uh, uh, without, you know, like you mentioned, without doing further investigation first to verify um, what I'm finding. So let's, uh, I'm going to do it, James. I'm going to do it for this family. So I'm going to go discoveries, instant discoveries, and I'm guessing that one is still going to be here at the top. Mm -hmm. Is there this is. the one? Was it? Now you have to go back through the process again because you exit you um, exited from the yeah was this the same so was it Harry Martin or what yep yep okay I That's the one I can't remember all right so if I scroll down yeah, it's, yeah okay right person okay so I'm gonna click on add to your tree and let's just we're gonna see what happens everyone this. This is uh, Watch Jeff Live. All right. Hi, Jeff. Continue growing your tree. So we use the plus buttons. Okay. So that's kind of, I mean, I like that if I'm a brand new beginner, but I don't, you know, that's nice that my heritage um, is helping them. So let's go back to him now. So Harry. Harry Martin. Would it be Wilmot this time? No, I don't see it there. Oh. I don't think it's updated the name. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. But it let's, may. Yeah, does it take a little bit of time? Maybe. I maybe. Don't know. Okay. Usually does. Usually updates everybody. Yeah. You might have to refresh the screen. Let me hit refresh. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, okay. you've got more information now. All right, so. That would be that's the process there, everybody. Yeah, Joan, so Joan says, "What if I didn't want his uncle's uncle? I just want his siblings." I think it's uh, when you're working with the instant discoveries. Yeah, you you, you accept it or you package, don't accept it. Deal. Yeah, it adds the package. And look at this, like only, you, like you said, James. Yeah. Do you see how it now it shows no discoveries when before I had others? I think yeah. what it's do it's re, it's doing that recalculation, like you said. So, uh, and I don't know how long that'll take for it to do. Probably not too long, but, um, yeah, very interesting. Okay. All right. So I, I started out here on discovery. I could see, James, how this would really be helpful for... Um, Beginners. Um, uh, yeah, for, for, for a beginner, and it kind of gets them ex uh, excited about adding people to their tree. I mean, honestly, when I was a brand-new beginner, I didn't even... I had no clue about... I should add a citation or I should try and verify <laughs> this stuff. But at the same time, I became interested. And so I'm, o I'm okay with this, uh, especially as it uh, relates to uh, beginners um, or even those that would be of the age of my, of my cousins, uh, like this family was. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, well, we've got, uh, this has prompted all kinds of questions, so let's let's do this, James. Let's pop over to my PowerPoint. Let's do a couple of uh, announcements and door prizes, and then we'll we'll uh, head over and do some more, more questions. So Sonny Morton, who was a very good presenter um, here, not, oh, just, I can't remember, last week I think it was, uh, she'll be with us in two weeks from today on why I love and how to use the newspaper collections at my heritage. So wonderful, uh, yeah, newspaper collections at my heritage, and I've been using them a lot lately, and I love them. So, uh, oh, I'm looking at Diane's comment now. She says an email may be coming my way, showing my additions that I can revise as wanted. Interesting. Okay, I'll watch for that, Diane. Thanks for sharing that okay let's do a couple of door prizes here uh, one of my favorite parts of our webinars so the my heritage complete plan gives you every possible thing that there is on my heritage the the family tree site subscription the data subscription access to everything um, James somebody was asking about uh, if the instant discoveries are they valid if they only have uh, like the basic my heritage plan or what do you have to have 
well, I don't. I guess I could look at this. In um, enhanced smart matching. So enhanced smart matching. I'm not sure what the difference is, but um, yeah. Do you have any other thoughts? I I haven't. That's not a question I've asked. Yeah. But it see at the bottom one is unlimited access to instant yeah. discoveries, and I'm I'm suspecting that you don't get that without having the the data um, option because it's just not going to happen. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. Okay. Uh, let's go to, let's find a winner here. We're going to say congratulations to Susan Brundage. Susan, congrats. You've got this coming your way. Susan, I'm going to send you an email and I'm going to ask you if you already have a at least a free MyHeritage account. If you don't create one for me, and then we'll get it upgraded to the, the full complete plan. All right, and then we'll let's do a MyHeritage DNA test kit. All right, who wants one of these? <laughs> let's go to. Let's go to Margaret Hall. Margaret, just writing down your names here. Margaret Hall. All right, so congrats to you, Margaret. All right, let's go to questions. By the way, yeah, there's there's so many more questions in my questions queue than we have time for today. So let me show you how to get around that, everyone. I pulled up the MyHeritage Users group up on Facebook, and I put this link in your chat area. Uh, so just go there, join it. Uh, free, of course. There's thirteen and a half thousand members there, and and here you just come and type in your question, and and you'd get all kinds of uh, good answers. So if we don't uh, answer your question directly here today, then this would be a really good place to go. So uh, again, just click on that link in your chat area, and that's where you'd get access to that. All right, James, let's do this. Um, and if you know, great. If you don't know, just say up. Oh, Go ask the user group. Uh, Martin, Martin says this. Uh, he's been wondering if there's a way to turn off the family tree component of the instant dis discoveries to just focus on the photo. I I guess, James, that that's what that filter would be, isn't it? So yes. If I come, in other words, all you have to do is click on the photo discoveries, yeah. and then the people aren't there. Okay. Yeah. So, Martin, that's exactly what you do. So, under discoveries, go to instant discoveries, and then just click right here. And that'll just let you focus on that. Good. Curious to, oh, look at this. Okay, my discoveries are back. <laughs> All right. So thanks, Martin, for that question. We're not sure, James, yet, if we can go back and look at the ignored. Um, no, the, I'm not sure. Yeah. But what I'm, what I'm saying is that um, if you haven't added that information to your family tree, uh, it will come up under smart matches. It'll come if yeah. there's any sources. It'll come up under the the record matches. Okay. And the instant discoveries is more kind of uh, uh, to give you packages of information. And okay. Um, I guess the da the danger is that if you don't, they send it again. That's great. Okay. Lots of good questions here. Um, an interesting one from Nancy, uh, who asks, "Do we still own our tree, or is it all one tree?" So, uh, no, no, no. You, you own your tree. Okay. No one tree thing. Yeah. So we've we've talked about the family search tree, and that is that one is is one big tree, and uh, comparing it to the MyHeritage tree, you own your own tree there, right? Yeah, you, yeah, you have your own tree, and. You know, there's there's advantages and for some people disadvantages of both. So, you know, it's just a it's it, and actually, the advantage I have is I have both. So I have a way to to take advantage of both. And uh, it's not saying that there aren't some issues with the family tree or uh, some issues with my family tree on my heritage. My family tree is is to some extent, even after 30 plus years, almost 40 years, is uh, um, basically a lot of the stuff in there is still inherited and I'm still correcting it and 
making sure it's correct. Yeah. Okay. The one I do have on on my heritage though is is only eight generations, so it's I don't you know it's pretty accurate. Okay. All right. So. I th- I, yeah, James, you were you were inferring this. Here's a the question from Cynthia who says, "So would these instant discoveries not also be reflected in the smart matches for each profile?" And I'm I'm yes. I'm guessing that the answer for that would be yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, if you have and that's when you good. go back yeah. to those individuals on the, on your family tree, um, I if you look at your you know your. Uh, at them, you'll see that there'll be smart matches for yeah. those people. Okay. All right, good. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, yeah, Susan's... No, not Susan. Yeah, Susan. Do people add to my tree, or can I keep it private? No, nobody adds to your tree. It is all... It's It's not private in the sense that other people can't see it, because anytime you do a smart match, obviously they're looking at your family tree. So that that's the way it looks, but nobody can make any changes to it. There's not going to unless you invite them as. A, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, so Susan, if you go into Family Tree and go to Manage Trees, here you can edit your tree settings, and uh, I think and it's it's within here that you can. Yeah, so you, Yeah, so you've got some permissions on who you want to invite. Um. Also, privacy settings. There's a bunch of those. Yeah, go go through and just view these. I I think it's all very nice. I think my well, heritage. You don't, Jeff, you don't have smart matches linked. <laughs> where so did you, you see one. that? On on content here. Did you see that? Yeah, here? go down where you say it. Enable smart matching. Let's see. What does that say? Default. Yeah, I've got I've got that turned off. I guess. It so how is like how is that off. different than this one? Enable smart matching. Oh, that's I don't. It's maybe. Like it's on here twi- oh 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 oh, this is showing me two. This is uh, one tree, tree oh, and this is my other tree. tree. Okay, I d- actually I did not want it on for this one. Okay, all right. Okay. So there fine. there was a question from someone out there I noticed, and they said I'm I'm not getting any smart matches, and so you might come here. Uh, I can't remember who that Murray maybe. Um, come and check this. So I'll show you again how I got there. I went up to Family Tree, went down to Manage Trees, and click on Edit Tree Settings. Make sure that's enabled. Yeah. And then right here, it was on the Privacy Settings. And just make sure that, yeah, that there's a check mark right there. Oh. All right. I might just put in a pitch for 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 making sure people can actually look at your family tree and interact with you because they're your relatives, and to have a private family tree as such makes no sense because you don't own or or uh, control your ancestors. So uh, you also you, you know I just have never understood privacy in in genealogy yeah. because there's no privacy for dead people. Yeah, that's that's true. I we had a webinar just last week where the presenter answered a question about privacy and and deceased people really don't have privacy. That's just how that is. Um, okay, let's see. Joanne says if a person on the tree is living, is their information visible to others viewing her tree, or is there a setting no. to block that? No, not at all. They're blocked. Everybody living is blocked. Okay, good to know. So this, this James, this is where you were talking about uh, letting other people find your site. I guess I've got that turned off right now for some reason. Send me note. Uh, yeah, lots of they've thought of everything. All right. <clears throat> okay. Look, well, Peg has a <clears throat> excuse me. Peg has a a comment on the privacy of a tree. She says I consider my tree to be private if I'm working on it and don't want to share or mislead anyone. Uh, you know, I've yeah, I can I can see that James. If I'm 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 working on a John Williams and I'm trying to figure out how he fits into my tree, I I might want that as a working tree. I don't want others to think that the John that I'm working on is in fact my ancestor until I really know it is. 
Um, I've I've led people astray one time at least for from doing that. So yeah, there's a a, a good thought, Peg. Um, well, there's one. There's a way to do that very simply with um, my heritage, and that is to use Family Tree Builder, which is the desktop program, which is free and you can download. Yeah, so I and noticed so, that was under here. If you go to Manage Trees, and you see right here where it says Download to Family Tree Builder, so that's what you're referring to, right, James? Yes. So when you if you put if you go to the Family Tree Builder part of the website and download the program, then you can basically download your tree into a Family Tree Builder uh, uh, website, yeah. you know, on your on your computer. Yeah, and then. It, then you, it it doesn't automatically uh, update your family tree on my heritage but uh, so you could work on it until you felt like you needed to and, and just go and update it and it will then synchronize between your tree on family tree on my heritage and then uh, your family tree on uh, family tree builder that's really the way to that's really the way to handle that kind of situation okay not, yeah not good just thought. Make your tree. Yeah. Not make your tree private, but use Family Tree Builder as the as your sandbox. Okay, yeah, keep it offline. Yeah, perfect way of describing it. Uh, Elizabeth is just asking, is there a working Mac version of Family Tree Builder now? And, uh, yeah, if you go up to the blog, um, I noticed this just the other day uh, where they announced that. So it's now uh, available. I'm not a Mac person, but so it's available for whatever that means. <laughs> Catalina well, those, and High Sierra. Yeah, those are the new new operating systems for uh, Mac OS Catalina is the one that's on right now and they're releasing uh, Mac OS I Sierra anytime. Okay. So if I, if I stop my, subs this is from Peg, if I stop my, my heritage subscription, what happens to my family tree builder data? Nothing. Yeah. Cause it's, it's offline, the, right? It, yeah. It's offline. It's in your family. It's in my, in your family tree builder program yeah that's actually good news because i didn't know that about the family tree builder and i've been thinking about why don't i have it on my computer and now i know why i don't <laughs> have it on my computer because i have the very new macintosh okay so yeah all right other a lot of these we've Here's an interesting one from Connie talking about the the photos. Um, she said, "Does it when you do the colorization?" <laughs> interesting question. Does it colorize it to the actual original colors? What have you found with that, James? No, <laughs> no. Okay, colorization is a is is a really complex process. It is it is it's, it's almost magic. You can't possibly uh, you know but what it does is it takes uh, just by interpolation of the, the software which I do not understand it uh, actually recreates colors now the question is does it do a 100% or does it recreate the original colors well we don't have any idea what the original colors were yeah. but it does add in appropriate colors yeah, and that's a good very, word for it. Appropriate. Yeah, it, and these are the ones that uh, that I just accepted. Do you remember that as as that instant discovery? And I'm I don't really. I mean, this it's not very good. I, I want to actually do this live and see what happens. Now it might be too small. It is. It's too small. Yeah, it's, they can't. They can't do it. So people have a tendency to yeah. add those thumbnail things in, and it's it doesn't really help. Yeah, this one need it 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 works. If it's if it's not not this small, let's just see what happens when I click on this one. So that was the um, colorizing one, and this is the. It just it just said that you have to have you have to have a certain size. There was a pop up menu that you clicked by. Okay. That said you need a certain size before it will work. Okay. All right. But still, it's it's I love it. It's remarkable. If I. Uh, let me show you this one, James. If I scroll down, here's uh, my mother-in-law's wedding photo. That's that's actually in black and white. That for she's never seen it in color, and uh, when it colorized it here, and I uh, I actually um, printed this off and framed it for her, and uh, <laughs> she looked at me. And she said, "Where'd you get that?" 
and uh and and she said that even the colors of the flowers were indeed accurate and uh she was just stunned she she's never seen that picture in color so yeah she was she was happy with that well actually you remember jeff well you may not remember you do a lot of these <laughs> but we were actually online the day that oh, that's right. this stuff that's right and we got the emails while we were online and we were looking at it yeah it's i remember really, that and i wonder fabulous. if it was that day that i did this one for the first time i might have done this one live on the air i can't i can't remember now anyway it was it was just absolutely incredible yeah it was an, it was an amazing thing well and this is brand new right now as of last week where you can uh, have these printed uh, what are these called they're like they're uh, tiles um, yeah wall art wall art tiles well, this put us into a dilemma because we we thought this is really a good idea, and yeah. then we have to go through and choose the photos. <laughs> that's not that's not easy. <laughs> so if I select that, I've not never done this yet. I'm going to click it. Print as wall art. I've selected one. I mean, we're doing this lot. This is how I learn stuff, uh, James. I just do it and see what happens. All right, re now we're redirecting to the mixed tiles website. Which is fine. And you're going to... Oh, it's not working right now. Oh, okay. I I broke it. It's just, I'm going to try one more time because sometimes that works. Oh, it's working this time. All right. So we'll hit continue. I could read all that, but I'll just... Oh, I guess I'll have to. And this, and this is neat uh, where you just peel off the thing and stick it on your wall. You're not putting... Uh, nails in your wall, so that's nice. And let's get. Oh, I need to type all that in. And okay, I'm not ready for all that right now. But it seems like a pretty seamless process. Okay, that's neat. Uh, mixed, yeah. Thanks, Maria. It's called mixed tiles, and I'm seeing it uh, all over social media now. How people are are doing this, and um, and it, uh, yeah, it looks real good. Okay, James. Well, any. Anything else we we've we've missed? Any any other thoughts come into your mind, or any any parting <laughs> there's, words? There's more in my, in my heritage than either you or I could yeah. ever figure out in lifetimes. So. Yeah. Well, that to me yeah. that means when you're ready for it, it's most likely yeah, there, it's there there for you. I mean, yeah. in other words, this is a program that has features for people who have been doing this for thirty or forty years, and it's also a marvelous tool for people who are just starting out. Right. It, 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 the, some of the DNA things and like that are extremely sophisticated and uh, useful in a, in sophisticated ways. So it's, it's some things that go, that uh, expand that the features are all there, but you're, you will only begin to realize how important they are and how much they, how useful they are as you gain more and more knowledge about what you're doing and, and doing genealogical research. Good, love it. Uh, good way to conclude. Well, let's let's go over to Carl's question. Carl's wondering this upcoming newspapers webinar. How do we sign up for that? Well, I'll, I'll put the link in your chat area, Carl, and this is where you'll sign up for all future uh, My Heritage webinars. And, and they just they just show up right here. The newspaper one it shows up right here under November tenth. So just hit register there. Okay, uh, it's been very enjoyable. Thanks, uh, James. I learned uh, uh, some new things today. I appreciate it, and uh, it's always fun to learn from you. Always fun to be with all of you wherever and whenever you are around the world. Thanks, everyone, for sharing part of your day with us. And remember, uh-oh, James, before I, say, before I uh, say my final words, I did just get that email that Diane was saying that I would get. I'm looking oh, at good. I'm looking at it on my laptop. <laughs> oh, good, interesting. Okay, uh, so how do I sign up? Uh, uh, yes, life is, life is short. Do genealogy first. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye, James. Thanks. See ya. Bye. Bye.